Hello and welcome to this week's lesson on cars. Now before we get things started, you've probably noticed that I have a different whiteboard. I've moved and so I've had to replace the old wooden one, but I've upgraded. I've now got an aluminum frame. Uh, it's lighter, more rigid. Unfortunately, the body is magnetic, so I actually gained some weight. But uh, it definitely is more rigid. I think it looks nice. And anyways, this doesn't matter at all, so I'm going to talk about this week's video. I'm going to be talking about turbo deactivation, and it's this idea I've had for a while, and I just kind of wanted to get someone else's thoughts on it. Um, and I'm just kind of curious why this hasn't been implemented. It's really not that complicated of an idea, so I just want to talk about it, see what you guys think, and maybe it's just a bad idea. Who knows? So anyways, I've called it turbo deactivation, and this, the basic idea is You've got a turbocharger engine, so if you haven't watched my video on turbochargers, that's probably a good place to start just so that you can get the basics and then watch this video. And what I've got here is an engine that you can use the turbo when you want, and then you can turn it off if you want a more economical choice. And you know, you're just driving around the city, you don't need a turbocharger, you don't, you're not trying to get anywhere very fast. But then you take it to the track and you want the turbocharger on. So. Basically how it works, I'll just go through the components first. I'm not going to explain how a turbocharger works. I've got a different video for that. But you've got your turbocharger. You've got two separate air intakes, and I'll explain why. You've got these two valves, and that's basically the idea behind it. You've got your engine, and then you've got your exhaust, your catalytic converter, muffler, etc. That stuff's not really not that important. So what happens is, is you've got... Say you're, uh, you don't want, well let's say you do want your turbo on, so it's just going to act like a regular turbocharged car. You've got, these are your two valves here, and so they're going to have this little lever, and you could do it with a different way, I just did pretty much the most simplistic manner of creating a, uh, a little hinge valve here, and I'm sure it could be done better, but I just want to get the basic idea across. So you've got this hinge, and it's just a little door that closes, and so it closes off this air intake. When it closes off that air intake, the only air intake allowed is this one, which feeds to the turbocharger. It also closes off this exhaust path. So, as your engine is revving and you're creating power, it's going to send your exhaust through here. It's going to get to this valve, and it's not going to be able to pass just straight up through the exhaust. Instead, it's going to have to go through the tur turbocharger. So it goes in the turbocharger, spools up the turbine, pulls in air through the air intake, that goes through the intercooler, passes through this valve, which is open to allow this air to go in, and then goes into your engine, and you have boost, and you create more power. Great. Now let's say you don't want power, or extra power, and you, you're trying to go for fuel economy. Well, you push a button, and these flaps switch over. So this flap now is closing this off, which won't allow air to come in from the air intake. And this valve here, closes this off, which won't allow air to go into your exhaust turbine. So the exhaust goes straight through the catalytic converter, now the muffler, and the air intake is, is more direct. It doesn't come through the uh, inlet of the turbo and go through the intercooler. Alright, so that's your other option. Would it be more economical? Perhaps. The idea being that if you don't use a turbocharger, you're not forcing in as much air, and if you're not forcing in as much air, you're not going to be forcing in as much fuel, so you'll save fuel. So that's the basic idea, and I would kind of uh, recommend implementing three modes. So see, you just have like a little sport button that you can push, and you can be in modes one, two, and three. Mode one being off, and so that would mean that your valves are closed, and you just use the regular intake, and you bypass the turbo. Partial, now this is kind of an interesting idea. So at low RPMs, you would be using it off, and you would just use this, and it would go straight out through the regular exhaust. Then when you get to high RPMs, the valve actuates and switches over, and then you start using, or switches back, sorry, and then you start using the turbocharger, and then you get more power at higher RPMs, and you have a lot less power at low RPMs for an economical, you know, at low RPM, you're, you're getting good fuel economy, and then when you do get to the high RPM, you get terrible fuel economy, but, you know, you, you produce a lot of power, and that's what you're going for. And then a third mode, full, which just means you leave it how it is shown here, 
and you just use the turbo constantly. Say you're at a track, you don't want to just turn it off every now and then. You're going to have all kinds of lags and things like that that'll happen. Um, and an idea also that I was thinking for the engine, rather than just a, a typical engine, because you're going to have a turbo and non-turbo, you'd probably want to use a variable uh, compression ratio engine so that you could have a higher compression ratio with the engine uh, without using the turbo and then a lower compression ratio when you are using the turbo because you've got that added pressure of the turbocharger. And that would also give you a better thermal efficiency when the turbocharger is off, allowing you to be more efficient. So, the benefits of this design. Save fuel when power is not desired. So if you're just driving around the city, you don't need that extra power, turn off your turbocharger and just drive your car like normal. Now the idea being that with a higher compression ratio and without using that extra forced in air, you can save fuel. I'm not really positive if that would occur, but that's the idea. Also, the ability to vary the power of the engine while keeping the air-fuel ratio relatively the same. So that's a good thing. You can use your car on the track, off the track, and uh, for different reasons. And some of the cons, some of the bad things about this, and there's a decent amount, so perhaps this is why it hasn't been implemented, but you've got added weight, you've got added complexity, you've got more moving parts, and you have, of course, an increase in cost. So is it all worth it in the end? Perhaps not. Would it work properly? That's what I really want to know. Could it work where you'd use an engine with variable compression ratio and turn off the turbocharger? Would you actually be able to get better fuel economy than with the turbocharger on? Now the reason I ask this is because there are some engines which, turbo and non-turbo, the turbocharger engine will get better fuel economy than the non-turbo, the naturally aspirated engine, of the same size. And I think that's kind of, kind of an interesting point. So I'd like to think that it would work in your favor where you could turn off the turbo and you could save fuel, but perhaps that's not the case. But it's just an idea to think about. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And um, that's all for this lesson.